Today, I'm with the developer of Posters 2.0. Your name is Chihat? Right. Great. Uh, well, nice to meet you. Let me give you a little handshake here. <laughs> there we go. Nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, so, yes, again, you have developed Posters 2.0, and it's a widget that allows you to put movie and TV posters across the wall. And I was wondering if maybe you could tell me a bit about the process of developing this. How do you come up with this idea? Okay, so yeah, uh, when I tried a Vision Pro for the first time, I had so many ideas for it when it first like was presented at mm -hmm. WWDC 2022, I think it was. So I was like, okay, what can I build? And then I tried to come up with app ideas. And the most obvious thing to me was like, if you if you look around in my, in my room, like you can see my uh, posters, but I also have like, other actual posters in my room. So I love movie posters and I love decorating my, my room with it. And the idea was like, I want to discover new movies, new TV shows naturally in my room. So the idea was like, if you have like an AR device and you can just put posters on your walls that update automatically and always show you like the latest, interesting, popular trending stuff, that was my app idea. And then I tried to implement it and actually it didn't work at first because Vision OS had some limitations. But yeah, that's that's how I got started. I love it because I also have not put any art on my wall yet. So it's really just making my, my blank walls a bit more colorful. As I look around, I've got a few here. If I see a poster I'm interested in, the new Avatar movie, for example, just popped up. And these refresh every 15 minutes or so. And when I click on one, I can actually see and move around all the details here and even pull up a trailer and it pulls up YouTube, see the cast, more info, even show times. And it's pulling up Safari windows, correct? Is that, is that That's how it's right. working? Yeah. It's like an in-app browser window, but it's like a Safari in the app. And I know that um, for YouTube, for example, it's, it seems like there's limitations. Like obviously there's some limitation that you can't just pull up a floating full screen window right. of the trailer. So right. there are a variety of limitations in Vision OS and you had just mentioned that at first it wasn't really working as you expected. And then what was the journey then to get to 2.0 and get it working as you wanted it to? Right. So first of all, like the YouTube limitation um, with not, not the window not being full screen, that's actually a YouTube limitation. Mm -hmm. It's not a Vision OS limitation. In the first version, um, which I shipped actually um, in, on like the first month when the Vision Pro came out, it had the full screen right from the start thing. But that's like a, a that was like a workaround that YouTube didn't, didn't really want you to use. And so they basically uh, found like a, a fix for that and it's not possible anymore. So like that's the limitation. But um, when it comes to Vision OS, um, basically the limitation, the main um, problem I had when I built this app the first time was it was not possible to pin windows to your walls. Oh, right, okay, like there, okay. Yeah, there was no magnetic pinning or something like that. And um, also like there was no API even to pin the windows to your walls as a developer, like an API is like a tool for developers. Mm -hmm. And it was not possible to do it unless you entered this full immersive view where only one app took full, co full control of your entire space. So you couldn't see other apps. You couldn't open another app like Safari and have the poster on your wall, like on the side. It's, it was not possible to do that because there are two different worlds within Vision OS and there they still are right now. So and, this, this hasn't changed. And for people watching right now, we are in this mixed reality world. I don't have an immersive environment on. You're sitting in my room. I have posters on the wall. And you had mentioned that you couldn't pin things on the wall. And that wasn't until Vision OS 26. Is that correct? That's right. And, and as we're talking here, I'm actually going to go ahead and pin something to a wall. And we can see here, even right behind you as we're chatting, I just pinned a, a Safari browser window to the wall and that's a really cool new feature and i can do that as we chat right here and i can go ahead and get rid of it and nothing's happening to our conversation because we're in this mixed space it's not overtaking our conversation so vision os 26 comes out 
Yeah, with New York, like that's 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 already the end of the story. I think. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> because because actually, um, before I even had the device, before it was even published, uh -huh. I went to a Vision Pro lab. Uh -huh. That's a place which Apple basically prepared for developers to develop apps for it upfront. And I went to one of these in Munich. There was one. Uh, I live in Germany. And in there, um, basically, I could develop the app and I could put on like their Vision Pro prototype or whatever they had there. And I could try to like implement my app idea. It was really funny because the other developers were like watching me as I walk around with like a window in my hand uh -huh. and trying to place those windows on the walls. Uh -huh. They were like, what are you doing? Because I was like the only one walking around all the time. <laughs> and because you, you, they didn't magnetically pin, so you had to really get them right. And right. then when you walked away and walked back, it was not exactly on the wall anymore mm -hmm. because the system didn't really try to track it that way. And I gave this as a feedback, and that, that was one of the main reasons Apple did these Vision Pro Labs, is to, to collect feedback from developers to try to actually achieve their app ideas. That was like my number one thing, and I think others have requested this as well, like Marcus Brownlee and many reviewers. But I was like the technical perspective, and I was describing like how it should work. And I actually wrote a um, like the blog post about it with five different um, tools or APIs that I requested from Apple. and that was like recognized by the MKB, MKBHD team and they reached out to me, interviewed me on a pop on their podcast and that way also Apple developers or engineers got like notice of it even more I think and it helped shape the, the, the feature which I know because actually when they shipped the widgets they shipped a size, a new size that didn't exist before on iOS or iPad where they have widgets as well they shipped a new size specifically in the poster format of, uh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it was like built for my app. <laughs> I and, gotcha. I, and actually when I was at WWDC last year, um, I talked to some Apple engineers as well. And some of them told me like, they like my posters app on the Vision Pro. So it's clear that they were like aware of the existence of the app. That's great. And so you said you have a blog post and you talk about a few other ideas beyond just the pinning to the walls. Have any of these other ideas been implemented or do you think they will? Or what are some of these ideas? I can show you the ideas. Let me just open up here. I have the page prepared All just right, in perfect. case. So the article is why I stopped building for Vision OS and what could bring me back. If you scroll down, the first thing I mentioned actually is magnetically pinning windows and objects to surfaces. And that's the one that definitely shipped with Vision OS 26. That's really awesome. Then the second one I was talking about is that I wanted to basically have advanced room scanning. So because one, some of my app ideas and, and many people's app ideas were like creating these 3D spaces that you can like, when you turn the, the device, you can like go go to these full experience, 360 degree, like gaming worlds, basically like, like the beach and stuff like that. And we want to build stuff like that in our apps as well. But creating those requires currently like basically gaming knowledge. And it's really hard to make because creating those worlds, like gaming, like game developers, they are huge companies, right? Mm -hmm. They have huge teams that do these things, but I'm an indie developer, I'm like a solo indie developer and I want to create stuff as well that is really fun, but I can't. And this API could make it much easier if I could just scan my room because this device has LiDAR sensors in it. And then I could like, for example, move, um, move something and it recognize, okay, this thing is movable. That's like the second API I, I basically suggested in the article. I'm looking at your article as well as we move down. All right, so skeletal recognition API and uh, Walter, get out of here. Sorry, my dog. <laughs> sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. No problem. I was apologizing to my dog because he looks so sad that I won't play with him. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so that's number two. And as I scroll down to number three, I see skeletal recognition. So can you tell me about, about that? Yeah, the basic idea is, as you can see also on the images, um, that I want to create something that is a bit like in, in the Sims game. Where, like on top of your head, you have some information that augments basically your conversation. Or it could also be a game where you, for example, um, I don't know, um, if you want to create interactions with people at home, it could show some kind of, uh, I don't know, leveling or some kind of energy, stuff like that mm -hmm. uh, on top of you. Or maybe it just like what, what Apple is going to ship most, most, um, most probably is something like live captures and stuff like that. So you can like see translations in front of you. Sure. But 
But building something like that is not possible right now because the system simply doesn't give you, again, in this shared space where you can have multiple apps open, it doesn't give you any information about people around you. And I think even if you go to the full immersive space, people are not shown, only objects, walls, and stuff like that. Um, and that's the limitation of the system right now. So you can't pin something to a person like you can pin something to a wall or have something pinned in free space. Exactly. And, and that's kind of on purpose because they don't want you to see people in full. Like I understand that they, what, they, uh, what they shouldn't do or don't want to do is to show full images. And we actually, as developers, we don't have full camera access. That will come with a lot of privacy issues, mm -hmm. right? And the, the thing that they could do, though, is give us developers the skeleton of the people around them, because that's like not really uh, like creating problems with privacy. And then I could just say, OK, put something on top of their head. And I don't know even where the, the person is in the room. I don't get that information. All info I can do as a developer is uh, or be sure of is that the thing that I created, the, the window bubble, whatever, it's always on top of their head. And the system keeps track of that. I would imagine a few years down the road when everybody is wearing a very lightweight version of this technology, it would be so useful as you walk down the street, if somebody wanted to pin something above their head for anybody to see, for friends to see, then they can, I mean, the opportunities are kind of endless there. Yeah, I mean, there are social things you need to definitely figure out there because mm -hmm. it can also be weird to have something like that. But my idea was really to like, um, really augment the information. Like when I don't, when I haven't seen, seen you for a long time, I might not remember your name anymore. Or I don't know, maybe I, I have some notes of like our last meeting somewhere and we discuss about a specific topic. And when I meet you again, I could get, and that's of course not in the Vision Pro, but like long-term as you're speaking, as you're talking about, I could get some additional information off the last conversation right in, in like my view. And that kind of stuff is like in the Vision Pro system on Vision OS system level, it's not possible yet. But I, I think there are a lot of experiences that would be really fun, at least, on the Vision Pro already if that API existed. There, there's going to be so many crazy apps that come out once the Vision Pro is slimmed down to a normal pair of glasses. It will happen. Right. We're many years away from it. But imagine, you know, you're young, you're at a bar, it, everybody's wearing glasses like this, just like everybody's flipping on their iPhones right now. If everybody's wearing glasses like this at the bar, maybe if somebody wants to post something saying, hey, I'm single, come, you know, approach me. Or say, hey, don't talk to me at all. I'm with my friends. And you can just right. have that above you. Uh, I mean, gosh, that's such a cool idea. <laughs> um, so, okay, skeletal recognition makes perfect sense. Um, the next up, I see interactive spatial 360, 180 elements. So what does that mean? I already talked about how hard it is to create this 3D full immersive world. But what's relatively easy compared to that is a 3D 180 degree or 360 degree, more like 180 degree video. And that's the Apple immersive content that Apple is creating. But there are a lot of other content creators who are also doing this like all alone or just in small teams. Like I think you just interviewed Hugh Hugh, who basically does exactly that. And he's even creating like films and stuff like that. But I, as a solo developer, can just buy a 180 degree 3D video device go film a location with that and basically create a video space for my app in which I then can place elements and maybe create a game where you have to walk through a city and collect some items. And this way you discover that city and can also ex uh, like experience it or things like that it would be much easier to create as a solo or small team with video. But the problem is the system video player does not allow placing anything on top of or inside the video. And then the last one is going to be discovering the world. So, oh, the future of Apple Maps. Okay, what do you have in mind here? That goes in a similar direction because imagine I didn't have to like travel to a place and take that 3D 180 degree video recording, but Apple Maps was available on the Vision Pro and had look around built in a way that everything is available in 3D and you can just walk around. And I, as a developer, could even use that this look around thing as like a tool, as an API to provide additional information in my app or play, make a game. Imagine there's a game where you can like walk around in a city, in a real city, instead of like a 3D imagined world. And like, I don't know, just imagine a game like Pokemon where you 
train Pokemon and you, you're collecting them and you just have to discover a city that you don't know yet. And while discovering it, you're also playing a game and that, that kind of thing would be amazing. Are you asking Apple to give access to the Apple Maps Street View data in a sense? Is that the idea that you actually would be going exploring within the Apple Maps world and then you would be playing a game within that world? Or am I misunderstanding? Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm saying. And and actually, there is an Apple Maps API, so developers already integrate Apple Maps like in their apps. That kind of um, API exists already, and you can even use it on Vision OS. But Apple Maps is just not using this look around 3D world yet, so we can't do this, like create things inside this world. And it will be really, really uh, enabling a lot of app ideas and fun, fun experiences if that was available. Imagine there are YouTube videos about maybe a museum that people make, and then you could see that in in like when while you're discovering that in on the map, and you can click and start the YouTube video and watch that or things like so. The the, the discovery um, is is really cool there. Once this type of uh, social media, let's say, were more mainstream, people of course would know that anybody might be looking at this picture I took, and then people could say, oh, I want to share this thing with the the world community. Like I'm at this bar and they have this cool secret menu thing. Here's a picture of it or anything like that, it could be kind of shared widely to people who happen to be exploring that area. I mean, that's the AR part of it. When, right. when we have the AR device, you can actually go there and actually see the, see the content. Mm -hmm. But right now with the Apple Vision Pro, the Apple Maps API could enable that, like kind of like traveling there through this look around view. And then when you are in the look around space, you could discover that's like the VR version of that. Interesting. And yeah. they could build, they could build, like if, if the API was there, they would have a lot of content and a lot of apps that already provide these kinds of content. And once the AR device is out, everything is already there, you know? So it, it would make sense. And that's maybe to, to like the question, um, if I think they're going to work on it, it would at, at least make sense to do that, I think. Of course. And that's a great point how, you know, Vision OS, Vision Pro, there's certain features that you think, oh, you know, why is that important for this like VR, AR headset? Well. It's still the same OS that's going to be driving the glasses in the background, kind of as people are walking around wearing these things out in the real world, not just kind of sitting at home or on a plane wearing these. So back to posters for a second, as long as we're chatting, yes. I just wanted to show the audience real fast. We already talked about how I can click on one of these and then see some details, but at any time, even when the widgets app is not open, I can go ahead and long press one. And then I can kind of resize it. move it around the room and it'll stay, it'll leave them float and say snap to a surface, snap to a surface there. Are there, are there any other projects that you're working on right now? Oh yeah, there is actually a really, really cool project that I'm working on, which uh, like um, kind of tries to work around these limitations that I talked about earlier with that you can't really place items inside like 3D 180 degree videos or that we don't have this look around yet. I'm basically trying to, again, like the posters app, trying to just create the app as good as possible, uh, as is possible right now, and hoping that people will really find the idea cool and that Apple engineers and Apple basically will be convinced they should provide like, or make these kinds of apps simpler. I call it Immersive Tokyo. And I actually traveled to Tokyo and um, like for multiple weeks, and filmed in four different districts of Tokyo, like the most popular ones, and filmed hundreds of videos in hundreds of locations with three different angles. So I, I can basically cover all those four districts and their main streets with 180 degree videos. And then in my app, you can basically travel through these locations. That's what I'm currently working on. Oh, wow. All right, I'll definitely want to see see more about that maybe when you're ready to release it. I just came back from Tokyo, so it'll be nice to kind of relive oh. those moments. <laughs> of the, uh, right. So very cool. Well, Jihad, thank you so much for spending the time with me. Uh, let me shake your hand. Thank you for talking through the development of Posters 2.0 and some of your other ideas. Uh, excited to see what comes next. Um, otherwise, for anybody watching, if you guys have questions for Jihad, put them in the comments. Um, and other than that, thank you, and I'll see you on the next one. All right. Thank you for inviting me. All right.